Welcome back to our channel, ladies and gentlemen. I want to begin this analysis by asking you one question. What is the situation of the cost of living in Kenya today? How serious is it? I'm asking this because I have seen our politics pegged around the cost of living. The Azimio leader recently gave William Samoy Ruto a 10-day ultimatum to bring down the cost of living because he says that William Samoy Ruto had promised Kenyans when he was campaigning that when he's elected into office and immediately he takes oath of office and places the Bible down, then he will ensure that the cost of living is reduced to the level of the ordinary man. Actually, President William Samuel Ruti and his deputy Rigedi Geshagwa had accused the former president Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta and Raila Muludinga as the duo that had messed up the economy. And they said that they had plans to restructure our economy. But William Samoy Ruto has defended himself saying that for the few months that he has been in office, he has stabilized the economy. And that behoves one to ask, who do you think is right? Do you think President William Samoy Ruto has stabilized the economy? And if he has, what are the signs that the economy is stable? Do you think Raila Muludinga is playing petty, uh, petty politics when he asks President William Samoy Ruto to work hard to ensure that he brings down the cost of living? Now, if you thought that the cost of living has gone down, there's a story that I want to share with you that is uh, in the Nation newspaper. It explains just how serious the cost of living in Kenya is. It says, uh, the headline, Shock as Baragoi children slaughter and roasts a dog to beat the punks of hunger. Now, the incidents took place in northeastern Kenya, which is uh, uh, an arid area, and it was confirmed by uh, the, the chief. It says that according to the area chief, Mr. Tony Lesokoyo, the incident happened early this week when several children between the ages of four and eight years slaughtered a dog, roasted its meat, and ate it. Mr. Lesoko said that, uh, said that after receiving the news, he headed to the village that has got 140 households and confirmed that three children had consumed dog meat. That paints a picture of just how serious the cost of living has become. It means drought and hunger is ravaging in our country. And there are families that cannot afford even a single meal in a day. It has reached a point where the consumable animals, the domestic animals that we can consume like goats and cows and sheep are dead because the drought is so dire that even the, 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 the cattle cannot survive. So they have resorted to looking for animals that we don't normally consume in our culture. And when I read this story, I thought, when will we stop playing politics with the lives of Kenyans? Because this is so dehumanizing, it is so shameful to our country. We are really degrading humanity. That our children can slaughter a dog and consume because they are dying of hunger. Is our president reading what is happening in the country? Has he detached himself from the people? Because at some point, Mr. Natembeye had urged Mr. President to ensure that he does not detach himself from the ordinary man. And I saw our deputy president defending Mr. President that if he had detached himself from the ordinary man, he would have been elected 
that it is because of his direct connection with the ordinary Manainchi that led to his victory. But when this is happening, are they feeding the president with the right information? Now, as this was happening, politics is being played because recently, Mr. President appointed Mr. Cleopas Malala as the Secretary General of the UDA. And their priority is to go to Kisumu and paint it red. That is what I read is their priority now. That when others are suffering from hunger and they are slaughtering dogs, they want, they are looking at 2027. And they want to start mass uh, recruitment of uh, party members. And Cleopas Malala was in Kisumu ensuring that everyone is given an UD, a UDA membership and i thought it is not bad but why can't we have our priorities well because it means that our president is really focusing on his re-election when you are in fact if you ask me president ruto's re-election is dependent on how he is going to handle his promises that he gave in the last campaigns and how is going to be true to his words when he's in office not by trying to recruit members because that won't help the same same members you want to recruit into the uda are the same same kenyans who are suffering from hunger and drought their animals are dying rivers are dying and rivers are drying and i think we really need to focus and place our priorities well recently it was reported that state house is spending 5 million daily on luxuries and entertainment and i was thinking why can't this money be diverted to help those who are in dire need of food and sanitary and, and, and clean water because I'm, i've got a feeling that this money is the one that is used to bribe the bribe the members of parliament from the jubilee from the odm whenever they visit state house the clergy because William Ruto has decided to buy the support of the opposition members of parliament and the clergy to help him maintain power. And I still, I still want to, to, to state here that maintaining power is dependent on giving Kenyans the basic commodities, not trying to buy leaders around and buying the clergy to support his bid to you know, continue hoodwinking Kenyans. And I think we really need to ask Mr. President to change his strategy. Instead of spending 5 million daily, how much do you think if we were spending just 2 million shillings daily on, on, on matters that, uh, that, are, that really touch on the ordinary Mwanainchi? How much helpful do you think it will be? And I think, ladies and gentlemen, something is wrong with our country and we really, really need to wake up and wake up this government the other funniest part is that our president continues to give more promises when he promised that within 100 days he will lower down the cost of living it was just hoodwinking kenyans because that has not happened six months down the line that has not happened what they who what they do is to go to nyayo to pray for rains you know this issue of trying to you know, tell Kenyans that they are men of God, they were elected, they, their victory was given by God, and so they continue praying just to show that they are really the men of God. And recently, this, uh, William Ruto himself told Kenyans that he will bring down the cost of uh, gas from 1800 to, you know, 500 and 300. And I'm just wondering, how will this happen? How will this happen when the promises that he gave has not been implemented? When all the promises that he gave have not been implemented? And the funniest part of, of it was that people were applauding and clapping and you know jubilating that the president is giving more promises and he's saying that by June the cost of, of gas will, will come down. How do we trust our president? If all the other things that he said have now been negated, universities are about to go on strike because they want to increase fees in our universities. 
all the subsidies have been abandoned. What do you think is happening? Can we trust our president, ladies and gentlemen? There is an Unga revolution that William Ruto will not be able to cope up with. Because every family now is suffering in one way or the other. I know there is the upper middle class and maybe a few of the lower middle class who can still manage to get three meals in a day. They can still you know, afford to take their children to some good schools. But it will reach a point when everyone is hungry. Those at the lower cadre, the, the, those he calls the hustler, will start, you know, invading those who have. And when everything is dry and even the lower and the, and, and the upper middle class no longer have something to eat, they will go to the streets. And this, is, this has happened before, even in the Arab nations like Libya and Tunisia and Sudan. This is what happened. When the ordinary Mwanenchi is tired of, uh, of, of the administration that are there, they will storm state house to ask questions to ask what are the where are the promises that you gave us why are we still suffering from hunger and if our president is not careful this is going to make him a one term president because he gave lofty promises promising heaven and paradise but we realize that he can't even deliver hell and is really good at you know making these promises and talking to people Kenyans have not learned. When I saw him promising how he will bring down the cost of living, he will bring down the cost of the gas, I was wondering, why can't we ask him to implement what he promised during the campaigns first before he gives us another promise? Because it doesn't make sense. You cannot add more promises on top of other promises if you cannot implement the very ones that you gave in the first place. What makes us believe you and trust that you will now implement whatever you are giving us? So, ladies and gentlemen, it is not politics when we talk about the cost of living. It is not mere politics when we remind the president to ensure that the cost of the basic commodities are reduced. Electricity, unga, fuel, school fees and all that. I want to say this. Where is David D., the chief economic strategist? The man who came up with the bottom-up economy. Where is he? Is this what he meant by the bottom-up economy? Because from where I see it, if this is what bottom-up economy is, it is not helping us. From where you are, ladies and gentlemen, what do you think? Share with me in the comment section. And that is my take.